Welcome to how to create a job queue friendly code unit. Hey, I'm Eric and um, you can run reports, you can run code units in, uh, in the job queue, but there's a couple of things you need to do if you want to be, if you want your code to be aware that it's actually running in the, in the job queue. And sometimes that could be a good thing um in other cases you can actually improve your uh in, in, add features to your job queue job so your users can make choices uh parameters add add conditions whatever it is uh, as part of the job queue so maybe you have the a generic code unit or do something and then your users can schedule it uh the same code unit and, and multiple jobs to do slightly different things depending on the time or day of the week or, or stuff like that without you having to create separate jobs for that and and kind of hard code that into into the code unit so let me show you what how you do that um so here is my business central running on my local machine as on docker and if i jump into the job queue here you can see that i just have a uh, bunch of standard handful of standard things um, and if we were to create a new job we can see we we get and and this is where you know sometimes the whole show more thing is is is, is it's both it, it's a nice function just because it clears up a lot of complexity but it also hides useful stuff uh, and and it might it, it discourage people from from using some of it um, but if I, I open that up we can see that we actually have some more things we have a field called parameter string we have a, a category um, and and if we open up the um, the inspection, uh, there's actually a bunch of lots of other fields. Um, record ID to process, which is kind of weird. That's a uh, that's a field that is used by CRM, uh, which means that whenever you try to add, if you if you for any reason delete it. On the CRM replication job, you cannot just add it again because this one is blank and then nothing, the jobs will never work. So you have to to fix this. Um, and and yeah, that's kind of annoying. But um, uh, but if we look at parameter string, that's a 250 character string that it's can mean be anything, and you can just feed that into your job. So how do we make a job, a, a code unit, aware that it's actually running in, in, in job queue? So let me, let me show that because it's actually way more simple than you would think. Um, so uh, job queue, PL here, we'll create a code unit, um, something number, uh, my job queue, job entry it, it, it's kind of weird that this is an entry uh, job queue job uh, the, 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 there's something gone wrong in the naming conversion right so, so a code unit has to for in order to work in the job queue have to have a on run trigger um, and as soon as you have an on run trigger it will run uh, so if we go in here, well, let me actually just deploy this guy for a second. Not that this will do very much, as you can see, uh, but at least we can get it to to a setup state. And the very first time you deploy a new app, it takes just a few seconds more because it needs to, hey, I'm a new app and all that good stuff instead of just updating an existing app. But typically, it's 
on right about now. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, are they really? Uh, we can just let's continue on this one so we are sh sure that our thing is loaded. Job queue. Job queue. We create a new job. We'll select the code unit. 5133, my job to job. You can change the description if you, if you want. So this one is, is ready to run. Um, but hello world. So if I put this in here, well, we can run it just in the foreground and well, nothing happened. But in order for that to actually work, so, so the weird thing, so the weird thing about a code unit and, and, and the weird thing about code unit is that it can just like a page, it can actually have a record. Um, so there is a property here. Um, this is table number. Um, and if we set that to data, can I do this in this version? I think I can job queue entry. See if we can do this. No, we're not allowed to do this. See if we can compile it. No, I think we can do that in, in a later version. That might be, uh, for, for the version 22. Um, so we have to find the table number for the job queue entry. So that is 472. Can you do this? Sorry. Am I, am I stupid? I am stupid. Did you yell and type angry comments in the uh, below the video? It's okay. So this is because it's called table number. That, that's why I got to totally sidetracked here okay back on track so because if we specify a table number then we have rec and rec is the job queue so we could go and say a message which we shouldn't do in the in the, in the job queue but we're just going to do it anyway message started with wow percentage one and dot, dot parameter string. Let's publish this thing. You can see that was way faster than before. Uh, job queue entries. And where's my thing? Run once, if you wish to continue, started with hello world. So just that simple thing of oops of adding the job queue entry as the table of the code unit enable us to get the parameters we're running so now we are able to be aware uh, that we're running in so so we we, we could we could do we do a lot of things here because if if this code unit was just being run code unit dot run, then the, the the record that was passed would be blank. So we could say that if rec dot um, uh, almost anything. Let's uh, let's find a good field. Uh, object ID to run. That's this one, right? If that one is zero, then running outside job queue, else running in job queue. Yeah, I know I did not have a statement between that, but uh, I hope you get my point. Um, so, that is actually how simple it is to be aware. Uh, and you can also check these things. Um, 
so so if if we want to do stuff and saying if reg dot run on saturdays then we do something else in in, in this job uh, or we take the parameter string and pass uh, commands out of that for what we want to do or perhaps we just want to use the um uh, the job category so we we could add our own categories here saying do this um, do that and and then we could say if category job category is do this something so lots of options uh, to, to automate you and make your job queue jobs just a tiny bit smarter and more friendly I, th I guess that was the title of the video so yeah make them more friendly uh, we try so so examples of of this um, that just come to mind now is um, reports that not really report but a job queue job that runs and 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 does create statements and stuff like that um, and we add in in the premise thing we we put a date formula in saying this is this is the the date that we need to look at to see if somebody needs a reminder or whatever it is um, and then you know if somebody in in, in accounting at the customer says oh we got to change this from two weeks to three weeks or whatever it is you just go in, change the parameter on the on the job queue, and you, there's no reason to to have that hard coded, or there's no reason to have it sitting in in a, in a setup table either uh, somewhere, because then suddenly, if you want to run the same thing more than once and and with different parameters, you can also do that. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and uh, check out. Oh, wow. I'm usually pretty good at this. Check out this video for other AL hacking and, and tips and tricks. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.